Now for all of these floor tile sections, we're going to paint them all solid flat black. Now I would have preferred to spray paint everything flat black, but unfortunately it's below freezing outside and I'm not going to spray this inside. Uh, so I really don't have any choice but to just paint it on uh, latex uh, flat house paint with a paintbrush. Now if you intend to use uh, cheap craft paint to paint it on, you know, it's probably thin enough to paint on as is. However, I'm going to be using flat house paint. So uh, for this one, I'm going to have to thin it quite a bit. Okay, now this is about as thin as I've got the paint. Uh, I've zoomed in on it, and you see how that drips there? How kind of a thin stream that it, it drips? That's just about the, uh, that's about the thickness I want, just about like milk. Now you notice these things, these things are really pretty solid. I was surprised. Now if you drop this on the table, yeah, it's going to break. Uh, you'll just have to glue it together and wait for the glue to dry. But what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and paint the edges. My suggestion is to paint all of the edges around the outside well, then set it on a flat surface, then go ahead and put your layer across the top. So that's what I'm going to do here. I've got a uh, nice wide brush, and you can put a rubber glove on your left hand. Chances are you're going to get black on your hand, so I would do that. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to go around the outside. And, you know, your paint is thin, but you want to make sure that it covers completely. So I am going to go all around the outside edge, and you know what, I'll probably kind of go up onto the edge a little bit all the way around. So this thing is going to have to be solid, flat, black when we get done. Now that the outside edge is painted, uh, I'm going to go ahead and paint the inside. And I would suggest that you load up the brush and really just push it in there. You don't want to have any, uh, any bare spots because they're just going to shine out uh, if you do. Also, the area that you're working on, make that the area that you leave the piece. Because once you paint this solid black, you don't want to pick it up. Because this paint is going to soak in. Uh, to that plaster and it's going to soften up that glue and you don't want to uh, it, this thing will fall apart you know because it's just kind of joined together uh, you know just by those thin edges so this isn't going to take you too long but just you're going to have to designate kind of a large area uh, to get all this done and after you go over it you know just kind of scrape that excess paint around you don't want it pooling up too much but just push that extra paint around on the surface and be sure it goes down into all those cracks. One last thing, after you get this completely covered, you don't really want it sticking to your uh, uh, tabletop. So I would take it, I wouldn't pick it up, but I would just take it and gently scoot it uh, to a new position on the uh, plastic or trash bag that you've got. And when it dries there, you shouldn't have any dried pools of paint that are going to be sticking to it that you'll have to remove later. Oh, and while you're painting the black undercoat, don't forget to uh, also paint these individual hex tiles as well. Now, after these have dried for about an hour, the last thing you want to do is touch up spots you may have missed. Like right here, there's a spot that I've missed. And if I look over here, there's a little white dot here. Okay, we're going to go ahead and dry brush the light gray onto the decorative stone. This is the stone from mold number 177. And uh, uh, what we're going to do is, this is the light gray, in other words, it's uh, one part black, two parts white, and uh, one part water if you're using house paint. If you're using acrylic craft paint, then probably no water added to it. We're going to have, uh, i got a one inch wide, a nice soft brush, and this one where you really want to take some time with. Do not rush through this. So if you've seen these videos before, this is going to be the same thing as you've seen before. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take paint and I'm going to uh, paint it off onto a paper towel. Uh, dip a little more paint on the brush, put it onto the paper towel. And what we're going to do is we're going to completely wipe out all of the paint on the paper towel. So I'm wiping around on the paper towel and chances are this paper towel is going to be full of paint and you won't know that you wiped all of the paint out of it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab another paper towel and I'm going to take that sucker and I'm going to be wiping out in here. Yep, see how I've got paint on it? Till I get almost nothing, almost nothing out of the paper towel. Okay, at that point, I think this brush is probably about dry enough. So what we're going to do is you're going to very lightly go over the surface. And if you very lightly brush over the surface, you shouldn't see anything going on with it.
At this point, I'm going to zoom in a little bit so you can kind of see this just a little bit closer. And what we're uh, what we're going to do here? Let's see. Okay. Now I am just going to lightly brush back and forth uh, across this surface, and as we go back and forth across it, you're going to start to see that some of this gray is starting to come out. Okay. You shouldn't see brush strokes, but you should see a little bit of the color coming out. Okay. Now, do you see how that just came out there? Okay. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use a couple different strokes. I am going to kind of use a circular motion. I'm going to go back and forth and I'm going to jab just a little bit. Okay, circular motion going the other way, back and forth, and jab just a little bit. And if you ever see a blotch of paint, then you know you've got too much paint on the brush. Okay, let's back this thing back up. And you can kind of see what's going on here. So, you know, I almost could have used a wider brush, but I don't know that I trust a wider brush. So what, what you want to do is you probably want to start in one area. And let's see, I'm just going to push, 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 and then kind of go a circular motion and then I'm going to uh, circular motion the other way and I'm going to jab a different direction and I am just going to go back and forth over this thing. Right now my brush is in probably really good shape here. Now if you compare the color of the floors with the color of the walls you're going to see that there's quite a bit of difference. Uh, the floor is much darker. Personally I kind of like it but you may not like it. If you don't like the floor darker like this, you can always paint it using the same method that you use painting the walls. And once again, I think it will be easier to see your figures and see your markers. And with two steps of the paint color, it's actually a fairly quick uh, painting method. Now when you're painting the stone floors, don't forget that you also need to paint these little individual hexes that are used to connect rooms. Now for the rubble stone, uh, we're going to do the same method that we used the other one. But you'll find with the rubble stone that you're able to actually put more paint on sooner. You don't have to have the brush quite as, you know, quite as dry. Uh, because you're going to have to push pretty hard to get most of this to come out. Because this, this surface is very uh, up and down and really deep cracks and high peaks and and that sort of thing so you notice that the paints going on a lot quicker than it was for the other one I could have a little more paint in my brush and still have the thing work pretty well and I can push a little harder on the brush a little sooner than I could than with the decorative smooth stone because this you're gonna have to and once you finally get it about where you want it you're gonna have to kinda push you know, push a little bit hard to kind of get some of that detail to come out because some of the detail is a bit deeper than it is with the other molds. I think that is probably just about right. I think this one is going to go a little quicker for you. You don't have to be quite as neat with it. And I think that's pretty much, uh, I think that's pretty much it for the, uh, for the rubble stone look there.